Welcome back. Uh, in a previous video, I sort of just did a showcase of me fighting some husks, and that looked very unassuming and unimpressive, but there was actually quite a bit of tech behind that video uh, that I sort of left intentionally vague, and uh, I will be showing that tech in this video. I'll be going over the functions and stuff, but let's just start by sort of going, just reviewing. Uh, I can sort of just attack normally with a left click. I can do a different attack by doing a crit there, and then I can right click to do like a knockback attack, and then if I spam click, I do another attack. This is accomplished by uh, actually putting some gas around the player. I'm going to talk about this with uh, starting by showing the ghasts. Not really showing them. I have them invisible with a resource pack, but uh, they are now visible, so you can see the shadows. If I turn on hitboxes, you can see them a little bit more. Uh, there are three gas around me. There's one that is anchored on me constantly, that is just basically locked onto my hitbox. It does lag behind me, which I use to then place another gas uh, ahead of me in the direction that I'm moving. Uh, I use the same tech to do the dash move, which moves me forward in the direction that I am going instead of in the direction that I'm looking and then I have another ghast that is on my crosshair uh, let me actually switch over and we will look at the functions for this if I go to functions here and then player loop I have player ID set up and then based on the different ID of the player I run a different player loop this is because I don't use selectors for this, if I go to player loop and look at one here, I have specific UUIDs referenced. Uh, this gas right here is the anchored gas, and you can just read the comments here. I, I rotate this anchored gas to face the player, then I teleport the projection gas, which is the one that moves ahead of me, uh, four blocks ahead, so it's exactly one gas ahead of me. This one, uh, this command, I, I place the anchored gas back to me. So uh, I use the the lag between ticks to detect where the player's moved, and then I teleport the player look gas, which is the gas that's ahead of my crosshair. I do that last. This is my dash detection. If the player is sneaking, and if their dash time uh, is less than the global time, I'll get to timestamps here in a little bit, uh, but this is a timestamp. Uh, if the timestamp is less than the global time, and... Um, the player is not directly at, in the same, basically in the same position they were in the previous tick, then I run the dash function. So that's everything that I do on the player loop every tick. Um, and then this right here is the right click detection and stuff. This is all not really that important. This doesn't, none of this in this player loop actually does. Uh, anything that you've seen so far uh, except for the dash really uh, this right here is a function that I use to detect the player left clicking uh, so whenever a player left clicks I detect it with the advancement and based on the amount of damage I do I run a different function so this is the medium damage function really the only difference between the medium damage so if I go to uh, the advanced folder here, I have high damage, low damage, and medium damage. The only difference between these functions is the score that I'm setting here. Uh, this is the attack value. Uh, let's actually go to, uh, let's look at this function right here, so weapon slash main hand stats. Um, based on the attack value that I get from this, I get a different set of stats. Now each weapon has its own stats that actually configure uh, all of the things that this system does. So if I go to get main hand stats here, you'll see there is a damage, knockback, vertical knockback, ID, speed, effect, and crit uh, value on all weapons. Uh, damage is fairly self-explanatory, so the amount of damage there is. Knockback and vert vertical knockback are also fairly self-explanatory. ID is the ray cast that I use uh, for that weapon or, or for that specific attack. I'll get to the raycast here in a little bit. Then there's speed, which is the amount of time 
added to the damage timestamp, which I'll also get to here in a little bit. Uh, this basically is a cooldown for every single specific entity that's hit by this system uh, that marks them that they cannot be hit for that amount of time. So if the speed on the weapon is like 20, the entity cannot be hit again by this system for 20 ticks. Uh, the effect is currently unused, uh, but that is for like particle effects or just other miscellaneous things that this weapon can do. And then there's crit, which is a critical chance, um, which I will get to uh, as well as here in a second. So let's look at this function here, damage slash cast. So if I go to functions, damage and cast, I start by just adding a, a tag here. This is used for knockback checking, which we'll get to. I keep saying we'll get to in a bit, but we'll get to it in a bit. Uh, but right here is the weapon specific ray cast system. So if I go to weapon slash check, uh, this will run a different raycast function based on the ID of the weapon or of that attack. So one is just a generic slash attack, which I'll show. Uh, weapons raycast generic and slash. Uh, this basically just places some hitboxes that look for entities, and then I add a tag to the the entities within that sort of hitbox area. Uh, and there's four checks in this. Uh, raycast the stab raycast only has one and it just sort of tags the nearest entity to uh, the player's look uh, each sort of weapon can have their own raycast or they can reuse other raycast this is the a really nice configurable system in this so you can have different uh, you can really create almost any weapon you want you can have like a spear that can damage one entity that's directly in front of you or something uh, it's really the whole idea of this is to completely revamp Minecraft's PVE system for a project we're working on because we kept coming back to Minecraft's PVE being just utter garbage. So we're just taking it by the neck and making it do what we want it to do, which is a joke I make every time I do something like this, and I say that exact intonation. Um, anyway, moving on from the weapon raycasts is... Um, the entity hit attempt here. Now this is where I will get into, uh, we'll do, f whoops, I just backed up way too much. Uh, I'll go to hit slash attempt. Now this is a timestamp check, which is the same thing that you've seen in the dash function, or, or the, the dash attempt function. Um, and we're actually gonna go into this function to look at how I calculate timestamps. Uh, this is actually not my idea, by the way. Timestamps are, uh, TS's idea. He just had them in a, a brief moment of clarity. At least that's what he said. Um, and basically right here is the hurt time timestamp calculation. Now the whole idea of the timestamp is it basically is something that we can check easily that prevents an event. Instead of having to put a timer or a scoreboard or something on an entity that I have to count down every tick with an at E selector, I calculate the next uh, tick in a global time value. So if I do scoreboard object sidebar uh, global, uh, you'll see I have a time score here that goes up every tick. Now basically, um, this just calculates the next tick on that global time that, that, that the entity can be affected by this function again. So uh, that attempt there. The speed value of the weapon determines that next tick that the entity can be hit. And this is all just per for performance improvements because this entire project needs to perform as well as possible under all circumstances. I avoid at E selectors whenever possible. Uh, the only time an at E selector is run in this main function here is right here to execute as all entities that have the hit tag. Uh, the actual raycasts have to run a bunch of at e selectors so they need to be we need to consider uh, reducing at e selectors as much as possible everywhere else because when they are used uh, at e selectors are not very efficient so I need to make them as efficient as possible when I can so that's what all the the timestamp stuff is for um, uh, next, let's talk about the knockback system. 
Uh, knockback is kind of hard-coded in this, but also not really. I mean, it, it's calculated dynamically the amount of knockback an entity takes. Entities have a configurable knockback resistance, uh, which is calculated here. Uh, I write everything... Uh, I do all math onto an uh, attempt value in this, so if you see this attempt value here, just know I'm doing math on that. Uh, I set the temp value equal to the knockback value of the weapon, and then... Uh, if the entity has a knockback resistance greater than 1, uh, and, and knockback resistance is kind of a misnomer, it's more like knockback vulnerability, uh, but I just call it resistance for shorthand because knockback vulnerability sounds weird. Uh, basically, if an entity has uh, a resistance value of 100, that means they take 100% of all the knockback from that attack. If they have like 30%, they take 30% of the knockback. Um... So this is sort of a, a reductive system. And that's just to keep the math simple. Uh, and then I have some branched functions here based on the, the knockback value that was calculated. Uh, and then there's vertical knockback, which is basically the same thing. It's calculated on the same uh, scale. Uh, so the, the vertical knockback just changes the height of the uh, raycast, or the motion raycast entity. Uh, if you're familiar with motion raycasting, you'll know what this is all for. Uh, I'm not going to get into it in this. Uh, after that, uh, we have the damage calculation and crit chances. Um, now, the damage calculation is the same thing. It uses the vulnerability um, system sort of thing where 30% is uh, a 30% uh They'll take 30% of the damage. Uh, sorry, I, I stuttered there. Um, and then there's also a crit chance uh, functionality here. The the crit score, which I talked about. Uh, this is sort of a fractional system. Let me open up the crit chance function here. I have an RNG function, which just generates a random number using LCG. Um, and then I set an RNG temp value equal to that RNG output. And then I do a modulo based on the crit uh, score and then if that equals zero uh, it will uh, basically double the damage and then display some particles uh, and that's 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 just how the crit system works it's nothing crazy uh, but a side effect to this is uh, as I said it's fractional so if your crit chance whoops uh, if your crit chance is two it is 1 over 2 or 50% which means that you have 100% to 50% to 25% uh, and so on or it's 33 recursive and then 25 and so on so the the there is no real in between to 150 I mean if you want to if you're doing a crit chance that high you might as well just increase the damage that's sort of my sort of idea behind that but that's the, the crit system, basically. Um, and then after that is the damage effects, which is the last little bit I wanted to go over. The damage effect is basically just a potion effect that I apply to the entity, so they have the vanilla damage animation, so there's at least a little bit of recognizable feedback. Uh, it gives instant health if it's undead, and uh, instant damage if it's not. And then just sort of a, a temporary particle will add a a score to every entity that displays a different particle on hit uh, or something like that later on but for now it's just a, a redstone block particle uh, but yeah that's sort of the idea behind this whole thing uh, in the future there'll be a lot more features in this right now this is sort of the the framework of this whole project um, I mean this will be uh, this whole thing's a fairly sizable project to be working on in the future uh, I might have videos uh, going over the tech uh, in future videos but that's basically everything I wanted to go over in this so yeah thanks for watching and I will catch y'all next time